All right, so President Joseph Robinette Biden is going to have to be making some decisions pretty soon about who he wants to put forward for the Supreme Court position that was vacated previously by Justice Stephen Breyer after he retired. And we are just now starting to get some of the main names that seem to be the front runners in this conversation. And I wanted to give you guys a perspective and a little bit of a breakdown in terms of who one of them is. Her name is Michelle Childs, and she is basically being promoted by guys like Jim Clyburn all the way over to even Republicans who we're going to get to here in a minute. And I think this is a perfect example of who Joe Biden should not be looking to nominate for this type of position, okay? Because, you know, he's come out and made the commitment. He does want to nominate a uh, black woman to the Supreme Court. That's absolutely fantastic. Support having that representation 100%. But as you're about to see here, uh, Michelle Childs specifically is pretty much the perfect embodiment of uh, somebody who would be working actively against the black community in the types of uh, rulings that she is made throughout her career, as well as the type of uh, law firms that she has represented. So uh, I got two, gift, two different articles here from the American Prospects, uh, Alexander Salmon, who gives us a little bit of perspective on all of this. So the first one here is Michelle Child sentenced a man to 12 years for selling eight ounces of weed. And he said, quote, I had more time than people who than people in there who killed somebody, says Willie Roy Goodwin, who received the, the harsh sentence from the Supreme Court hopeful. So the details of this are just absolutely fucking wild. Let's just go ahead and uh, get into some of them. They say, in 2009, Willie Roy Goodwin went before Richland County Circuit Court Judge Mich Michelle Childs to plead guilty. He really didn't have much of a choice after inviting an undercover cop into his house repeatedly and selling him marijuana, all caught on hidden camera. He thought a plea deal looked like his best, sh his best bet, so plea he did, and uh, to five charges of possession with intent to distribute marijuana and one charge of failure to stop for law enforcement vehicle. Uh, but there was also a reason to be hopeful. They say the sum total of all five weed sales was only 8.73 ounces. Now, I don't know how much you guys know about weed, but this is like roughly less than $2,000 worth of weed. I mean, this is not that much weed. It's obviously the amount that not a recreational marijuana user would have on them at any given time. He was obviously selling marijuana. That much is clear, but still 8.73 ounces. It's not even that much weed. We're talking about a couple thousand dollars worth of weed that he had on them throughout the sum total of all of these different sales. Okay. This was not even at one time, but they're going to get to a little bit more explanation on that. They say a trifling amount to justify putting someone away for half a decade. Uh, it was a sort of situation where a, where a canny judge understanding the situation could have found some sort of workaround, but quote, five years was what they were saying in the beginning. I'm thinking it ain't nothing but some weed, Goodwin told me via phone. Quote, even my lawyer was telling everybody weed was about to be legalized. It wasn't anything serious. So that was the mindset he was going. Maybe I'll get, you know, five years, which in and of itself would have already been completely ridiculous, right? Obviously, we're talking about way back in 2009. The situation with marijuana was significantly different than it is right now. Much more tough on crime interpretations of the law. But even so, okay, we're talking about five years for, you know, a tiny amount of weed that he had on him. Uh, even that would have been completely ridiculous, let alone the 12 years that he ended up getting. But uh, they say Judge Childs didn't see it that way. And after hearing the prosecution's argument, she sentenced Goodwin to 12 years for his half pound of cumulative marijuana sales. And because it was a non-parolable third strike offense, that meant that Goodwin was compelled to serve a minimum of 85% of that sentence locked up with violent offenders, 10 plus years of hard time, regardless of good behavior. Quote, I had more time than people in there who killed somebody. It was crazy, said Goodwin for bullcrap. And he's absolutely right. But they continue saying, according to court documents obtained and reviewed by the prospect child's harsh sentence came as a surprise and the Richland County Public Defender's Office quickly filed a motion to reconsider the sentence detailing improper arguments, unfounded speculation, and incorrect legal assertions by the prosecution. And they say, quote, the assistant solicitor said that if the cumulative weight of the marijuana that the defendant was charged with selling on different occasions was added up, it would be the equivalent of trafficking marijuana and that the court should consider this, the document reads, but this is simply incorrect and the defendant must be in possession of at least 10 pounds of marijuana to be found guilty of trafficking. 10 pounds of marijuana is what it's supposed to be the standard for getting a trafficking charge and they tried to give him one and successfully I guess gave him one 
for eight ounces, okay, these are not even comparable. We're talking about a minuscule fraction of what the standard is supposed to be, and yet this is what she chose to pursue. Uh, they say, quote, the prosecution too had without evidence assumed that the defendant had been dealing drug drugs in larger quantities, just making it up and assuming that, and made that a core component of the case, asking Judge Childs to consider the infraction tantamount to trafficking. So in other words, she just used whatever bullshit justifications that she could in this moment to give this man the harshest sentence physically possible, okay? And the reason that she was doing this, at least part of the reason, was because she was trying to vie up uh, for a position uh, under the Obama administration that she ended up getting largely because of rulings like this. So they say, Childs was not a household name at the time, but she was on the national radar, and Goodwin's case ended up being one of her last on the state court. A few months after sentencing him and denying his appeals, in December 2009, she was nominated by then-President Barack Obama to serve on the United States District Court for the District of South Carolina, and she was confirmed a few months later. So again, just one reason here why this type of person, Michelle Childs, should not be put on the Supreme Court, somebody who has spent her career being extremely tough on crime, on non-violent drug offenders and giving them sentences that are completely unnecessary given the standards and the actual evidence of the case, but using people and completely tearing apart their lives and their families' lives in order to try to get some sort of a career boost for herself, okay? Absolute ghoul shit here, but another example that gives us a different side of this perspective in terms of why she should not be nominated to the Supreme Court, uh, again here from the American Prospect doing great work for us, they say, Clyburn pushes management side labor attorney for Supreme Court, Michelle Childs, a potential Potential choice to replace Stephen Breyer worked for years defending employers accused in racial, gender, and other discrimination cases. So they say Clyburn has made explicit what CNN argued implicitly when the network lamented that another testy Supreme Court battle is the last thing America needs. So first of all, we're talking about Jim Clyburn, who, if you guys remember, in the 2020 Democratic uh, primary was one of the major reasons why Joe Biden was able to successfully turn the tide against Bernie Sanders with uh, Jim Clyburn's endorsement of Joe Biden. So uh, you know, Joe Biden might owe him a couple favors, I guess, and it seems like this may be one of those favors that he's trying to call up for. But um, again, it's saying we don't need another testy Supreme Court battle, right? As, as if like, we're just going to put forward this name and everybody shut the fuck up about it. Don't have any questions about her legal history or her history that we're about to get to here working for these corporations. Just shut up and don't give Joe Biden any problems over this. But they continue saying answering this call for Democrats to hone their pick to Republican preference, okay, already a Democrat, Jim Clyburn, when they were given the opportunity to fill a Supreme Court vacancy after Donald Trump just filled three with Federalist member extreme conservatives on the Supreme Court, they are not only trying to, you know, not push for a progressive or a leftist by any sense of the imagination, but he is literally saying we should push for a Supreme Court replacement for Stephen Breyer that is amenable to Republican interests that is basically in line with whatever Republicans want us to do with these nominations. Again, these Democrats are just basically acting as Republicans. They are acting on behalf of the Republican Party the exact same way that we just saw them do with the bipartisan infrastructure framework where you see the inevitable results of what bipartisanship gets you. It gets you conservative legislation. In this case, it seems like tough on crime interpretations of the law uh, as well as, you know, corporate interpretations of the law that are favorable to corporate America. But of course, he's saying, he wants to uh, hone their pick to Republican preference. And uh, Clyburn has put forward Childs as a bipartisan answer, saying, quote, I want to make sure that it's a woman that will get universal support. When I say universal, I mean bipartisan support. He said on CNN, quote, I know that Michelle Childs will have the support of several Republicans. One of them, South Carolina's own Lindsey Graham, appeared to endorse Childs over the weekend. So if you needed any other justification or reason to not support Michelle Childs, uh, fucking Lindsey Graham is supporting him, okay? Anybody who Lindsey Graham would be okay with from the Democratic side of nominating Supreme Court justices, that should be about as much of a red flag as you could possibly ask for, okay? But they continue saying, Child's experience is worth scrutinizing closely, and as a lawyer, Child served as an associate and then partner at Nexon, Pruitt, Jacobs, and Pollard from 1992 to 2000. And at Nexus, uh, Nexon, Pruitt, Child's worked primarily in labor and employment law, principally working on behalf of employers against allegations of racial discrimination, civil rights violations, and unionization drives. And they say Bloomberg Law has 25 cases registered in which Child's participated during her time at the firm, 23 of those, almost all of them, 
them uh, involve alleged employment discrimination or other employment related civil rights violations. Race and gender were common factors in such suits and seven such case cases entailed race based job discrimination and another three involved sex based job discrimination. In all but two registered instances, Childs was not representing the plaintiff but the defendant, meaning that she was overwhelmingly representing employers and corporations against the interests of labor. Okay, so again, kind of ridiculous that if you're going to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court, out of all of the countless, countless, you know, qualified examples of people who you could represent and fill that quota, right? Of all the people, you're going to choose somebody who spent their career actively working for corporate America against the interests of not only working class Americans, but also even specifically black working class Americans. It's like, it's, it's so fucking ridiculous at surface value. You could find so many different qualified candidates that are much better and would still fit uh, the description of having a black woman nominated to the Supreme Court, which again, I completely support. It's not about that. It's about her actual record and what she was doing throughout her career. But uh, to give you an idea of what some people are saying Biden could do right now instead of nominating somebody who has spent their career being tough on crime, throwing people in jail for nonviolent drug offenses and, uh, you know, working for corporate America against the interests of working class Americans. Well, he could do something like, I don't know, nominate a public defender who actually does, you know, the grueling work on the ground of defending people who maybe sometimes otherwise wouldn't be able to afford uh, private legal representation. So uh, they say here from Yahoo News, public defenders to Biden, pick one of us for the Supreme Court. And they say with President Joe Biden, expected to announce his Supreme Court nominee in the coming days. Uh, more than two dozen organizations representing public defenders are sending him an 11th hour message. Pick one of us. They say, quote, the Supreme, the current Supreme Court suffers from an astonishing lack of professional diversity with an overrepresentation of lawyers who have worked for corporations or were prosecutors, reads a private letter sent to Biden last week by groups, inclu including the Black Public Defender Association, the National Association of Public Defense, the National Legal Aid and Defender Association, and the Legal Aid Society. And they say, quote, too often past presidents have communicated through their ju judicial nominations that in order to be appointed to a prestigious federal judgeship, a lawyer should spend their career working at a corporate law firm or as a prosecutor, they wrote, by nominating a former public defender uh, to the highest court in the country, you would make clear that you believe in defending the rights of people who cannot afford a lawyer is just as valuable as representing the wealthiest Americans. So I think that that's a good suggestion. And if he is going to nominate somebody, he should nominate someone like a public defender or literally just anybody who did not spend their entire career representing corporate America against the interests of working class Americans. So, you know, at the end of the day, this is probably the route that we're going to see Joe Biden go. I mean, obviously he is hyper, you know, fetishized and obsessed with bipartisan coalitions. So it wouldn't at all surprise me if he ends up not only returning this favor to Jim Clyburn, uh, but also using this as an opportunity to pretend as if bipartisanship is a good thing. And uh, of course, then they will turn around and weaponize her identity uh, and basically say you are a racist if you tried to put up some sort of uh, opposition to this type of nomination. But understand on the substance, on the merits of this, this is not the type of person you want to be nominating to this position. You should nominate somebody who has experience representing, like a public defender would, representing average working class Americans, or who at the very least, if you look at their legal record, uh, you know, has an extensive history of defending the rights of labor, defending the rights of working class Americans, as uh, Joe Biden continues to pretend uh, to be a, a somehow an FDR style president or uh, the most pro-union president in modern American history as he claims to be. Well, I guess we're going to see, you know, put up or shut up, I guess.